Alpha one, take two marker. Hi, I'm Hugh Jackman. Whoa, no, no, nope, stop. Words that were coming out of your mouth, take them back, take them back in. Claw mobile. No, hey, you don't know who you're dealing with. This was not my idea. Not Just my to, idea. No, it was definitely not our idea. Oh, well, I can afford anything, I'm Hugh Jackman, but. If you're a filmmaker that wants to know how to light commercials like a pro, you're in the right place. Today, I'm gonna to give you six simple but powerful techniques that will elevate your lighting game instantly. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned cinematographer, I think these will help you out. My name is Josh Miller. I'm a freelance cinematographer from Salt Lake City, Utah with 10 years of experience working in the industry. I've worked on a range of exciting projects with industry professionals, and today, I'm gonna to pass on to you the best lighting techniques I've learned along the way. Just to give you a little background on this commercial, this was for the cell phone company, US Mobile. We were doing a parody of the Mint Mobile commercials that have Ryan Reynolds in them. Instead of Ryan Reynolds, they hired Hugh Jackman, but they didn't have the budget to hire the real Hugh Jackman, so they hired the Wish.com version of Hugh Jackman. He wasn't quite Wolverine, but he had the charm to pull it off. In terms of camera, we were shooting three cameras, two Sony FX6s and one Sony FX3. To keep things moving and be effective, we wanted to get a wide, medium, and tight all at the same time. And it honestly was super helpful so that we didn't have to reshoot everything every time we wanted a different shot. We shot the main portion of the video on a psych wall, which if you don't know what that is, it's short for a cyclorama wall. Basically, a psych wall is a big stage that is usually L-shaped and has no hard corners. It's designed to look like an infinite background and they're super nice because they're just clean and simple. Usually a psych wall will be pre-lit, meaning there are lights already set up lighting the wall. We were shooting at a sound stage here in Salt Lake City, Utah, that are some of my good friends called Cutthroat Studio. Their psych wall is a 65 feet by 45 feet sound stage. They have 11 pre-rigged Aperture P600C lights to light up the wall of the Psyche and eight pre-rigged Aperture 600C space lights above on a grid. So here is the first of six key tips for lighting commercials. Make sure your Psyche wall is pre-rigged with lights. Otherwise, you'll spend hours fighting shadows and wasting time. It's not common for a Psyche wall to not be pre-lit, but just make sure. For our first setup, we began by placing our talent here on the psych wall so that we had enough room between the talent and the back wall and the talent and the cameras. For our key light, we set up a book light using two Aperture 1200Ds bouncing into a six by six ultra bounce and then diffuse that with a 12 by 12 magic cloth. Book lights are my go-to when it comes to creating nice soft light. You are softening that light by bouncing it and then softening it even more by diffusing it through a scrim. The only problem is bouncing light like that actually reduces your output by a decent amount. And then when you push it through a thick piece of diffusion like we did with the magic cloth, you're losing even more output. Hence why we use two 1200Ds. Let me walk you through what goes through my head when I'm trying to figure out lighting for something like this. First, I wanna know how big of a space I'm lighting. Next, how soft I want the light to be. Then what aesthetic we're going for. And lastly, how close can I get my lights to my subject? I need to know these things because every one of them affects each other and helps me to come to a decision. So for this scene, we were lighting up a pretty big space. We wanted a big wide shot of our talent, so we had a large area to cover. Because it was a wide shot and a large area, that means I won't be able to get my key light as close so it's not in frame. But because I want a soft light, that means I'm gonna need a bigger and thicker source since it's further away. But because it's a bigger and thicker source and I want to do a book light, that means I need really powerful lights to make sure I have enough power so that after the light is bounced and goes through the diffusion and then travels that distance to reach the talent, it is still powerful enough to do what it needs to do. Here we are in the basement. Welcome, welcome to the dungeon. I was explaining how a book light works and how much light you're gonna lose when you're doing a book light. But I wanted to actually show you guys. I thought it might be more helpful than just talking about it. So I've got my handy little light meter here so I can, we can really read some light and show you what we've got going on. So I've got my Amaran 100X bouncing off of a five in one reflector and then pushing through another five in one reflector, but it's just the diffusion part of it. Not, you know, not what we would use on a professional set, but it gets the job done. So for settings on the camera, it's a 148th shutter. I'm at a 1.4 on the aperture and 640 on the ISO. So for whenever you're using a light meter, you plug all that information in. All right, so let's get a reading. I'm gonna try and stay in the same position the entire time. So, so we're at 1.4 and a half. 
and that's through all of it. So to get correct exposure, I would need, which it's at right now, a uh, one four on the aperture, which it is. So right now we are getting correct exposure. I took the diffusion off, so now we've got just the Amaran, and that's set at uh, 50%. That's bouncing against that five and one reflector, and that's all it is. So let's get a reading now. So that's a two and a half. So that would be, you would set that, like aperture wise, you would set that between a two and a two eight. So that is a whole stop of light that that diffusion took away. So in order to maintain that light at a two and a half, uh, I would have to crank up my light all the way up to a hundred percent to, to bring that back up. That's a, that's a stop of light and you're doubling and having the light. It's, it's very good. It's there's, that goes at a whole nother thing. Not going to get into that today. So that diffusion, just that diffusion alone took off a whole stop of light. So now I'm going to just turn this light around and I'm going to let it blast me in the face. It's going to be like super overexposed, but we got to do it for science, you know? Okay. So now that is, yeah. Yep. So here we go. All right. We're at a 16. So that is six stops more than what we were just at. That's seven stops more than diffusion. Seven stops. That is a ton of of light that just hold on. okay let's just fix this hold on much better holy crap that was bright as okay so like i was saying six stops seven stops from with the diffusion that just shows like how much light you're losing by doing that and so you need to you need to understand that kind of stuff I, and just so you can verify yeah so 16 stops i'm sorry 16 uh, that's sorry <laughs> six stops. Uh, that's an F 16 that we're reading. So you have to have a lot of light to be able to compensate for all of that light loss when you're doing that kind of stuff. That's why I had two 1200 E's. So your second key tip is to understand the physics of light distance, size, and softness all affect output. So adjust accordingly. And the third key tip is to use a book light. It's a cinematographer's best friend for creating creamy soft light. Everyone loves. And honestly, it'll have your client saying, wow. The last two things we did for this lighting was turned off the light on the psych wall and overhead on the left side of the stage. And that was to create some contrast on the face. We didn't want a crazy contrast ratio, but enough to have some shape. And we also had a six by six negative fill just in case we needed to control it a little bit more than that. And lastly, we brought the lights down, lighting the back wall. I used a tool called the EL zone on my small HD monitor to properly monitor exposure. So it's like false color and a light meter had a baby and you can read everything on the screen in terms of stops, which is the proper way to measure light and communicate it. We brought the back wall to be exposed at three stops over middle gray. And that felt like a good spot for the wall to be a nice bright white, but not like exploding. So since we're on the topic, I want to give you the fourth key tip, get a monitor that has the EL zone tool. I'm not sure who all has the license for it, but small HD for sure does. And like I said, it's like a light meter in false color had a baby, but false color is nice, but it doesn't really tell you where everything is at exposure wise. It'll tell you if your things are overexposed or underexposed, but it doesn't really help you create contrast in your image. As you can see in this example, I have the ability to see on set my contrast ratios and set proper exposure. On the left side of his face, it's a sitting in yellow, which is the proper exposure for light skin tones. And on the right side of his face, we're getting a mixture of middle gray and a half to one stop underexposed. The EL zone isn't just a tool. It's, I'm telling you, it's a freaking game changer. Before I used it, I would spend a lot of time tweaking exposure on set, and now I can dial in my contrast ratios and exposure in real time just looking at my screen. And I can make sure every shot is balanced perfectly. If you're serious about leveling up your lighting, invest in a monitor with this feature. For this next scene, we wanted it to feel like a behind the scenes sort of thing. So honestly, we didn't do too much besides shift our camera angle. And the only thing we added in was the boom mic stand on that right side and the light on the stand in the background. 
and we adjusted the 12 by 12 book light to just sit at a better angle for their key as well so that it would you know, get kind of that Rembrandt lighting. I decided to keep the lights off that were turned off on that, you know, from that first scene that were on that left side. And because I wanted it to, I wanted the wall to have some shape itself and having that little bit of a darker background made it feel more behind the scenes. But you can really see from these shots just how important having a big key light is if you want soft light. I mean, just look at it. This light just wraps around her face so nicely. Moving on to our next setup. We wanted like a backstage sort of vibe and thankfully Cutthroat, they have these big black curtains that were directly behind us where we were first shooting. So it was just a simple flip the world and we did a couple things that and just kept it simple. For our key light, I wanted kind of a high soft light, but we didn't want to move everything around. And as well, we were set, we were kind of up against the wall a little bit here. So we used a little trick. We kept the actual light off camera on, on camera left and then set up a four by four bounce board on a C-stand on camera right. And we shot the light across the frame and hit the bounce board to act as our key light. We just used some barn doors on the light to focus it a little bit more and keep it from hitting the talent from that left side. Next, we added a tube light on a C-stand to act as an edge and a hair light for our talent to separate from the background. And lastly, put a light in the back to streak across those curtains to give it texture and depth. All right, so here's my fifth key tip. When it comes to commercials, you have to be careful about how dark you go with your lighting. Most clients won't be down for a super dark and moody shot, just to be honest. One of the things we did right before we started shooting this scene was the client actually said it felt too dark. As a cinematographer, you have to decipher by what that means. Is it the overall image that's too dark or are the contrast ratios too, you know, too much? One thing I always start with first is bringing in a fill light to lift those shadows on the fill side of the face. And honestly, that usually does the trick for the client. Let me show you an example. With this example of me, I've got my key light on my right side of my face and no fill or anything on the left side of my face. Without changing anything else besides adding in a bounce, you can see the image now just, it just feels brighter just because I have a lower contrast ratio on my face. So that tip is to decrease your contrast ratios before anything else. If your client says the image looks too dark, don't just turn all the lights up. First, start with a fill light on that fill side of the face and then work from there. For the sixth and final tip, don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to lighting. Everything that I used on this commercial was basically three point lighting. And I feel like a lot of cinematographers think they need to reinvent the wheel every single time they shoot something. And the fact is, is that's just not true. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. Using the principles of basic three point lighting and creating depth in your image is the most important thing. So lean on that and use it to your advantage to make incredible images. All right, so that is it for today. If you liked this video, you know, maybe consider subscribing. And if you didn't like this video, maybe watch another one to see what you think, you know? So I just, I just wanna help, you know, I just wanna help cinematographers, you know, be the best. So like I said, if you like this video, Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. And if you are subscribed already, thanks for being here. First off, that's super nice of you. And, you know, like it, comment if you have any questions. Like I said, if you didn't like it, watch, the, maybe watch this video. See if, see if that changes your mind. I don't know. Either way, you know, so. I need to do like the Ferris Bueller. You're still here? What are you doing? The movie's over. Just, you know, leave. It's time to go. All right. I guess if you want to stay. I got to go, though. Bye.